Hello everyone. It's so nice to see you again. Uh, so today I am uh, here to do some coding on stream. Uh, we will be basically coding a save and load system. So for now, uh, if you have been following my previous streams, uh, we made some pool checkpoint system and a player respawn system. So when the player dies, they respawn at a certain checkpoint that was hit previously. But whenever the user uh, turns the game off or quits it, uh, there's no way to save their pros, uh, progress, right? So today we're gonna finally handle that. Uh, I thought it would be cool to do it on stream because now we have our project in hand and uh, we will be able to you know, uh, learn some methods of how or what we can do uh, uh, to counter the issue of coding and saving. So if you have played like uh, any AAA titles, um, any new titles, uh, Tomb Raider, Forza, uh, uh, Forza Horizon, and uh, other many different games, uh, and uh, what they do basically there is uh, they also have a checkpoint system, of course. Uh, they allow you to manually save at certain points when you are not in combat or when you are uh, in a like a safe zone, like uh, at least Assassin's Creed do that. I remember, um, but the game. Uh, keeps on automatically saving as well at certain points, right? So we are obviously not making a AAA title, but here, uh, since it's a story game, a story based game, and there are certain uh, places in the game where the player has to die and uh, it uh, comes from the last checkpoint. So we have like checkpoint scores together rather than like uh, one big mission of, I, get, I don't know, 30 minutes or something and no save in between, uh, that's not going to happen with us, right? So uh, it's a linear game, so the player goes to the track that we have designed for them. So they will hit all the checkpoints, uh, and uh, whenever they hit the latest checkpoint, we're going to save the game. We are not going to give the users the ability to save the game themselves, because there are two things. Uh, first of all, uh, since it's a small game, and there are like checkpoints, as I talked about, uh, uh, as I talked that they are very close to each other. Uh, what the players can do is, uh, I remember like playing Doom 10 years prior, uh, they had this system like you can press F5 and it saves uh, uh, like that, like instantaneously. Uh, so what I, I used to do is I used to cheat through the game because it is hard at certain levels. So I would kill an enemy and press F5, kill another, press F5 just to save my progress because I wouldn't want to like come back and kill them again and again, right? So this made me, this made the game like a lot easier, you know? So we don't want to give users this because at uh, their end, they like things to be easier, but what they love is a challenge, right? So therefore, what we're going to do is whenever a checkpoint is hit, the game is going to save and when they quit it, they go, we will give a little warning that, all right, so you're quitting it, so uh, any unsaved progress will be lost. So uh, the game will be saved till the last checkpoint. So whenever a checkpoint is hit, there will be a small, um, you know, information sign here, the saving game or something on the top right or top left corner, whichever is free, or maybe bottom left or bottom right. So they will be, they will know that now we have hit a checkpoint. So they will know how far from a checkpoint they are until uh, they save the game. So um, anyway, what we're gonna do is basically uh, that once the player hits checkpoint and they know the save, the, the game is saved, they will close it, they will come back and they can press this continue button here. If you can see my screen on Unity, uh, we have this button ready here, continue button, they can press this to start from uh, the previous place they played, or they can press a new game to start a new game. It's totally their choice. So if the, if uh, you have a, you, you just downloaded the game or you just started playing, so the continue button will not show. We will develop that functionality as well. It will only show when there is a save file. So we are gonna create a save file on user's hard disk uh, through some method called binary formatter. Uh, so it will, convert this, uh, the save data into binary format and encrypt it so the users cannot be able to um, the read it, to change it. Uh, it's also like, as I said, it's about a challenge as well, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So without further delay, let's 
get going. So I'm here in the assets folder, like the main folder of our game. And this is the start menu. If we press new game, we are uh, shifted to an, the scene uh, of climbing level demo as we were talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new script here. Actually, I'm gonna create a folder because we need a few scripts for saving and loading system. Wait. Uh, And we're gonna call it save and load scripts. And I'm going inside and I'm gonna create a new C -sharp script. I will call it save data. So what, what we're gonna do is basically uh, this whole path, save data, is gonna have certain variables that are serialable or serializable. Serializable mean that they can be stored in a file. So we will store certain variables in a file and then we will load it when with the user presses continue button. So in this save data script, what we need to have is basically what we need to have, like actually, we have a few scenes. So we need to first uh, store which scene the user is currently on when he quit the game or when he uh, hits the checkpoint. And then we're gonna get the players or the checkpoint position actually. So we will respawn the player at that particular checkpoint in the, in the scene. And thirdly, we want to see how many enemies in the scene died, right? Because the objects, they are not intractable. If they were, we would store their positions or something like that as well. Like uh, for instance, if you destroy some object, I don't know if it happens in any game because in GTA and Assassin's Creed, whenever uh, you destroy anything, a car or something and you save a game and go back, it's right there it's just uh, you know it's new uh, it, there was there's no trace of like uh, you doing any violence with that with any object right so anyway in this game we definitely don't need that then so there are three things first thing is the scene which scene uh, we the player currently uh, is to save the scene right uh, so we will just stay with syntax honestly and then there is the player's position where we now want to play to, to respawn like the checkpoint position and the third is uh, basically the enemies how many enemies died okay so uh, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is this save data whole thing is gonna be saved so we cannot have it as mono behavior one uh, because we don't want to inherit from the unity uh, and uh, it's going to be public, of course, but I'm going to put something called system or serialize Okay, what's going to do is it's going to make this whole class serializable. So there are a few variables or objects that are serializable. Integer, like all the base uh, data types, like integer, plots, strings, they're serializable, including the lists and there is as well. But game objects, for instance, like I have any component attached to any game object or any game object. There are these things are not serializable. Vector three, like the positions, right? They are stored in vector three. They are not serializable. Uh, so we we whatever we want to store is not serializable. I will show you what things we will store, but first I'm gonna uh, need to use Unity Engine dot scene management because we want to store a scene management. Okay, now we probably don't need these two things. We're not going to do anything like update or start. Whenever we want to save something, only then uh, some save system we will create another script for that. That's going to create this data. That's going to take this data and put it in a file. Okay, so this class uh, doesn't need anything. So what I'm going to create first is the checkpoint position. So I'm going to create an array of loads as I just told you that vector three is not a serializable data type. So I'm going to go with checkpoint position. I'm going to name it that checkpoint position. Okay. So it's it's an array. There are three positions, right? X, Y, Z, of course. So it should be an array of three uh, floats. So once we save it and when once we load it, we'll just put the player's position uh, according to these values. So that's, I think, pretty straightforward. Then what we need is a list of enemies' IDs. Guide okay. enemies' IDs, what are IDs, basically? Uh, if I will, let me actually go to GMT. Uh, 
process, combat system. Hi, uh, uh, if you are following my uh, previous streams, we are we were playing a lot with this script, script manager it controls how that of the player and everything. So this is attached to every component, enemy and player. And what's what I have created is a public float variable. It is unique position ID. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give every enemy a, a, a unique ID, and I'm going to base it on the position. So whenever the game starts, the awake method is being called. So I'm going to say that if the if this game object, if this uh, the game object that this state manager is attached to has a tag enemy, then put the positions added uh, with each other, like X, Y, Z, three positions would be added to each other and uh, put it in a uh, unique position ID. So put that in unique position ID. So we will get a position ID there. So I'm gonna put position IDs inside the list. Uh, and then what we're gonna decide on the basis of that, that someone is died or not, okay? Third thing is of course, as I told you about, I'm gonna uh, store the scene index, it's active scene. Or I should call it current scene index. Current scene index, okay. Now I'm gonna need a few things. I'm gonna need checkpoint positions from state manager because checkpoint position, current checkpoint position is in here. But in a class like uh, this, which is serializable, if I declare uh, any uh, game object or component, it's gonna give me an error. So. For, for every component like that, I'm going to say system dot non serialized. Okay. And then I'm going to say that private object and player object. So it's going to get a player. Okay. So because uh, checkpoint positions are only in the player, uh, player state manager. And I'm just going to copy it. Okay, I should have noticed. Uh, private ABC state manager. I'm gonna call it player state manager. So player SM something. And the third thing would be enemies. We need enemies uh, state manager. Or not here, actually. So we got these two things. Okay. Then what we need to do is whenever, basically, this call, uh, this uh, classes instance is being created, uh, like in a safe system, as I talked about. So we want everything to be happened uh, uh, at that time. So I'm gonna just create a constructor. What constructor is does is if I if I go in any other script and say like uh, save data x equals new save data so it so it's gonna run my constructor right away and all my values are being set will be will be set right so that's why i'm gonna create a structure okay then i'm gonna say public save data the constructor's name must be the same as the boss's name so that same. So I'm gonna say that current. Let's start with current scene index because that is easiest thing to do. So scene manager dot get active scene dot build index. Okay. So we're gonna have a build index here. Then let's put something in player object equals game object dot find with tag okay so we're gonna find a pair using the tag box sorry uh, player okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get its state manager as well so player sm would be equal to player dot rg dot at component abc 
environment for him. I did. So ABC state manager. Okay. So it's gonna get the component of pair object. This, this component, the state manager of pair. So now we are off that. So if, if I can show you inside state manager, we have this thing and um, current checkpoint. It will store the current checkpoint. So we're gonna do a checkpoint position. First of all, we're gonna declare it as new float of three things. Okay, it's an array of three columns. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put at its zero the x value. So player state manager. Okay, I did something wrong up there. But it is giving me two things. So okay, no, let's go. Player state manager dot this thing. Transform dot position dot x. Okay. Position dot x. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this two times more and the second index of the array actually the first because zero is the first so uh x y z cool so check my position is stored now we're gonna just uh to check if everything is working uh we can say like f checkpoint position we can get like the first position if it is null We're gonna give some error that no checkpoint is that no checkpoint for Syrian. Okay, cool. Then it's not gonna happen because I have a checkpoint at the start. Because, but if I forget it in any uh, particular scene, then it's gonna give me some error, right? Then we have guide enemies ID. So what we're gonna do with that enemies ID? One thing I could do right here is I could, as as you can see, that we have a boolean. Public boolean is live is equal to true. So I could try to get every enemy, uh, every game object with enemy tag, and then see if is live is false, then add it into this list. But right now, since if enemy is died, is died, then the game object, that game object, that enemy's game object, is gonna be turned off. If that is not active if any game object is not active we cannot find it with a tab so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another script basically for this thing so two things are that we have index and this let me now quickly run into uh, unity and Create an other C sharp script. We will call it that enemies list. Okay. That enemies list. What do we want here? We do not want mono behavior at all because, uh, and secondly, we want it to be static because it is not going to be. So the thing about mono behavior is we don't want save data or that enemies list to be attached to any game object. But with mono behavior, you have to do that. So we just keep these scripts uh, accessible from anywhere. But we just put static here so that there is only one instance of this particular class, and anything inside this class would also be static. Uh, I'm going to create a list in this class actually. So it's going to be static, right? So I don't need update method for sure. But same thing about start. Uh, we will need. Uh, we actually don't need start as well. So what we need is we need one uh, one list. I'm just gonna call it. Need to add it uh, which is static, right? Because it's a static class. So list blocked. I'm gonna call it enemy IDs because I know every enemy ID here is or dead enemy ID. New list. Plot. 
Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a method for adding an enemy. So whenever the enemy will be died in the state manager, this method will be called. And state manager has all the IDs, so it will give it an ID as a parameter. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to enemy IDs dot add ID. And we want another method. So once uh, the game loads and uh, when the game loads and we see that that enemies are there, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, come here and put this list here, enemy IDs, equal to whatever was in the save file, right? So we, we're, we will do that in the load manager, but right now I'm just going to put the list here and I'm going to get a list of floats that I'm going to put this enemy's IDs list equal to. Because we don't want it like uh, when, when we uh, once we come back and press continue, we have things as well. But when the user quits again, this list is not going to have anything in it. So, you know, that will raise a problem. Uh, so for the next time, there won't be anything in the list. So enemies are going to come back again. So that's why I'm going to, whenever I'm going to load the game and turn those game objects off that were died in the previous save game, I'm going to call update list and I'm going to update that list with all those enemies back, right? So I'm going to call it just loaded list and enemy IDs equal loaded list. Cool. So that's my, uh, let's start add, uh, uh, sorry, that's my dead enemies list. So here, what I'm going to do is simply, simply uh, guide enemies ID equal dead enemies. I'm going to, since I'm going to just simply call this class here, as it is not going to be aware of static. So dot, what do we have here? Enemy IDs, I think. Enemy IDs with capital D. Save this script. So this is save data. We have non serializable uh, things which we are going to use for uh, like getting some checkpoint position and everything. But what is going to be saved is is these three things actually: checkpoint positions, die enemies IDs, and current chain sentence. Okay, nice. Wait. Uh, yeah. So here I'm going to. Add things to die and dead enemies list first. So you're gonna press app zero health manager. We're gonna to go to zero health manager when this function is called is live is false. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if this dot game object dot tag equal equal double equals just to compare enemy add enemies list the script dot um, add enemy and we're gonna give it unique position position ID okay so I'm gonna whenever the enemy dies we're gonna add to this list cool okay <clears throat> our next thing is to create a save system that is actually going to save things actually going to save the script to the file okay let's go back to unity wait for it to reload assemblies and everything and i'm going to create a new c sharp script i'm going to call it save system simply so i'm going to go inside it we do not want it to be one of behavior we are not going to attach it to anything and secondly what we want is we want this boss to be static so there, go, there are going to be two methods here and they are not going to be these two first method is going to be save game okay and we cannot just leave it uh, void and secondly we want it to be accessible by the script so it is a public method and it is static because this class is static so void Okay. There can be only one instance of this, uh, and uh, 
public static we're gonna make it a load game after as well so move this comment what I'm gonna do now is uh, as I told about uh, talked about uh, yep as, as, so as I talked about uh, the binary formatter thing so first of all what we need is we need system to input output IO okay so because we're gonna deal with some files here and secondly we're gonna import some I add this name here I always forget that so system dot runtime dot serialization dot formatters we need a binary formatter so binary okay system runtime serialization serialization we write in file formatters and particular formatter which is a binary formatter for encrypting our data now after loading these things let's make an instance of this binary or matter and I'm gonna call it formatter and I'm gonna uh, initiate that binary formatter okay I it's nice book What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a path where I'm going to save some data. So I'm going to, it's going to be string of course. So we can simply create like since I'm on a Windows PC, C, C column uh, two slashes, and then I'm going to say like uh, go to users, save it anywhere, right? Right? Because I'm on a Windows. But the problem is it's, gonna, it's not going to save on like another platform like Mac OS or something like that. So we can deal with this by just using Unity's described like location. So application dot persistent data path. So I know where, where my persistent data path is. It's in app, app data, uh, local low, it's in users. My username and data, local low and the studios and the studio is the something name there. If you put in unit, whatever you put in Unity, it's gonna make a folder like that. And then I have the three player controller. So I want the game to be saved here somewhere. Okay, but it, it's alright if you even if you don't know the where persistent data path is. Where it's good. Okay, so persistent data path, and I'm gonna go with I'm gonna create a folder in that data path. You know, just just put it here, right, uh, with the player dot log and other files. So, doesn't matter whatever uh, name you say. I'm just gonna say player dot save game. So you can put anything in the extension. You can put anything. Honestly, it's gonna create a file and it's gonna read from that. That's his job. Okay. Here we are. Okay. We're gonna open a file stream because we need to write to this file. So this path uh, is gonna. So we we, we need to uh, put, put the file in this path uh, and put our data, save data, in that path. Okay. So I'm gonna say file stream. Just name it stream. We put new file stream of course. And it takes some methods. It takes a path of course, and then it takes a file mode as a parameter. So. Uh, File mode dot create. So we need to create a file, right? So that's why file mode is created. If we already have a file, we'll just say file mode dot open. This is working now. Save data. I call this data equals um, new save data, of course. So our constructor is not taking anything. If it took anything, we will just put it there. So our constructor does not need anything from. This script, so it's gonna create the whole instance of this into this data, right? The data object. Okay, so this data can be put into the file now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna serialize it, of course. So for matter dot serialize uh, stream. Stream is our file stream. So put this data thingy, format it and put it in our stream. Okay, and always remember to. Close the file whenever you open it. 
So three minute tools as file string. And this is for making sure that I am saving for data actually. I'm gonna put I'll comment it later, but right now I need it. Yeah, so game save. I'm just gonna get some debug law whenever the game is saved. Cool. Now let's come with the load game. First of all, I'm gonna get this path here. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if there is a file that exists. Okay. File dot exists in this bar. Okay. It's a very convenient uh, method that file dot exists. Does it just tell us if it exists or not? It will be helpful for us in the future as well. I will just show you in a couple of minutes. But so let's just copy things from here. Paste it here. This one as well. But we want it in open mode as I talked earlier. Then we need save data. Now we need to put uh, data from the file in this variable. So for matter dot be serialized. as save data okay so it's gonna be serialize it according to this screen cool and uh, we will get everything inside magically for all our variables that we need so stream dot close of course and okay <clears throat> the thing about this is that there are actually two things. Uh, what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm not gonna do things with data here. So when we load the game, uh, what I want to do is I'm gonna set some instances. For example, a player's position to the checkpoint's position and things like that. So I'm gonna do that on some button press, of course, just as it should do the continue button in the canvas. So when the canvas button is pressed, then the game is gonna be loaded, right? So I'm, I can't, of course, do it here. This script is not mono behavior. I'm not gonna attach it there, and I, sh sh I shouldn't be uh, because save system can should be able to, we should be able to call save system to save game from anywhere, wherever we want to do it. Yeah. When the player is quitting, when the checkpoint is being hit, anywhere, right? When the game loads and we get this variable, uh, we get everything in this data, right? You know, I shouldn't call it variable, it's an object. So we get everything in this variable, in this object, data. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it to some method, some script that was calling for the, the load system, right? That was calling to load the game that is attached to the continue button. So here I'm just gonna return it. Then data and public static not void. It's gonna give object of type saved it. If we cannot find it, so we're gonna say return no. So we have this script ready. The next thing we need to do is we need to create save and load manager. Why is that? <clears throat> save and load manager is going to be attached to some game object here. And its method or load game would work if we press the continue button. Okay. I'm going to create an empty object. I'm going to call it save load manager. I'm going to create a script here and call it save or manager. Just uh, rename it to save and load manager just to distinguish between game objects and the component. Let's go inside it and look, take a look. Uh, so, first of all, what we need is scene manager of course because we need to load some scenes here 
Now, <clears throat> the thing is, when we press continue button, first thing is that's going to happen is it's going to load another scene. When it loads the scene, then everything in this particular scene is going to be turned off. Cool. So how can we get data from load game and put it uh, in the new scene, right? Use it in the new scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this little uh, script of our here. We're going to use uh, something that Unity provides us with on scene load method on enable and on disable. When we use these things, these things, uh, so whenever a scene is loaded, whenever any scene is loaded, it's going to run a particular method. And in that method, we can put our player things after loading the scene, we can put the players things or the enemies, you know, we need to disable the enemy. We need to put players position as checkpoint position. We will put everything there. Okay. So before that, uh, what we want to do is it's going to be mono behavior. It's going to be attached to something. Actually, let's create a method public void save game. Okay, the save game is pretty simple. We are just going to need to invoke our script here and this method called save game. Was it save game with the capital D? It was. So that's it. And then there's a load game method. So if I actually let's get save data data equals save system dot load game. So calling this method, it is gonna return me this data. I'm going to get this data here. Okay. And what can I do now? If I load the scene right now, if I load this particular scene right now, I can't do anything else. I can't use this data because this script is going to be just over. I cannot put player position in their particular position or something like that. What I need to do is invoke uh, or use the on loaded or on scene loaded uh, method and something. So to use that, basically what I will do is I will load the scene here. Scene manager or load scene data dot active scene index. It's going to load this particular scene in this method and then we will have some uh, methods that will work on this when the scene is loaded. So for that, first of all, we need on enable. Scene manager dot scene loaded. On enable, we are gonna do this, and on disable, we're gonna do minus. Okay. Scene, uh, scene manager to scene loaded equals scene manager to scene loaded minus scene load. Okay. This is a short form for that. And then we're gonna go with private. Wait. Scene loaded. Cool. And it's going to take scene. This is just a convention. We're not going to use this parameters inside. And uh, another is load scene mode. So it's just fine. It's just like that. Now, here, whenever a scene is loaded, this is going to be called now. Okay. So, what do we want here? Get our data. Okay. 
here we wanted it because we wanted to check which scene we want to load here we wanted it because we want other things like so data is in our hand then we're gonna see if data is not no and secondly what we want to see is if our particular scene that we wanted to open is open is uh, you know loaded And that's some active some process. That's it. That's okay. So we have that. So only if these two conditions are true, then we want player object, of course. We also want enemy state machine we don't want players state machine because we will just simply uh, make its position equal to the checkpoint position but for enemy we want them to disable uh, on the basis of uh, their IDs their IDs are stored in their state managers so that's why we want their state manager enemy SM so for each um in object enemy object in game object or find game now we want the array of all the AM objects with a particular tag game objects with tag the tag would be enemy of course for each of these enemies what we need to do is we need to first get their state manager because uh, we have their object here it's called enemy object dot um just gonna use do this yes so we need to get component statement okay then what we want to do is we want to go into another loop. This is not a good practice. We should do binary searching or some other searching that is more, that is more optimized than using a nested loop. But for simplicity, I'm showing here. Uh, I will just do this. I will probably change it to binary searching of the enemy tags. But what's going to do is right now I'm going to just use a break statement here so that it will take similar time. Anyway. Uh, so data dot died any what did we have here? That an email ID. So if there is an ID and uh know it. So we are gonna get every float of this list. I'm gonna see whether it matches anything inside our uh, whether it matches anything inside this loop, uh, loop like any enemy inside this loop so okay so if enemy sm dot was it was it a unique position something um, yep unique position ID is equal to the ID in this that enemy is ID. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna enemy dot sm dot uh, 
uh, first of all, we want to do this Boogie and his live equals to false. They are not a lie anymore. And then we're going to do uh, the object of set active false. Okay. And then I'm going to break the loop because we found this one. We found ID for this particular menu. Okay. Then we're going to go to the next one. Uh, after this for loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this list, dead enemies list, dot update list. As I talked about, like we need to update the list as well. We just kill them here. Okay. Update list and data. Uh oh. Data dot enemies ID. Data dot enemies ID. So we're gonna give that this list, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we are gonna make the player go to a particular position. So player object equals game object dot wait let me copy that from there as well so we just want this player object okay then here i'm going to just simply use vector 3 position position dot x equal data dot uh checkpoint position x is zero y is one and c is two right. c cool. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to see if where object is still null. Actually, we should see it beforehand, before putting it there. Just to confirm that we are getting the player, okay? Because I'm not sure if we will. Uh, so if player object, I'm actually pretty sure that it is not going to be null because now everything is right. But we will see. So if player object is null, then um, then just tell me else this, okay? But it is not null. And finally, here to clear object dot transform dot position equals position. This position, okay? We got that. Nice. Um, so, scene loaded on a, on a particular scene. Uh, load now the problem <clears throat> now there is another problem which is that once i uh i press like new game button and there is already a game that is existent i mean the game file that exists data is not going to be null and the active current scene index is going to be the first scene because it's the first thing that's going to be uh the, i mean we might, might be in the second scene so if we if we save it in the second scene then that's not going to be a problem then this loop is going to uh work only when we press continue but if we are loading the new game and the the first uh, you know scene the same scene with both new game and the continue game 
right? If, if the save game is in the same scene, like the first scene, which is going to be started when we press new game. So if both buttons load same scene and there is a file, the save file that exists, because the data won't be null then if it exists, then on both new game button and continue game button, this is going to happen. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a little boolean here. So it will be only true if, you know, uh, if we press the new game button. Public pool We don't want it to be serialized, of course, because we don't want to mess it in the inspector. System dot non serialized. Non serialized also means that in the inspector it's not going to be sure. Okay. System dot non serialized public basically image yeah. static. Public static rule is new game equals. So I'm going to assume it is a new game unless a continue button is pressed. So I'm going to false it here because I'm going to just, uh, use this load game method without continue button. So is new game equals false. So once it is false, then whatever is here is going to come inside and if it let me first um, do this so if is the new game equals false it is getting false when we are continuing we are pressing continue game so if it is false only then start all this first okay so cool uh, <clears throat> so everything is set I guess what is that what I'm forgetting uh, okay one more thing. Let's go back to Unity so we can see if we are getting any errors. We are. Okay. Uh, so it's saying that only assignment calls, increments, decrement, await, and new object expressions can be used. Okay, it's line 60, I think. It's line 21. I always forget which one is the oh. this this is weird. You can see. And Don't enable on the server, right? So, private for scene, mode. What is it I'm forgetting? Um, Take a look at the error again. Only assignment call can be used as a statement. We are actually missing some thing. Uh, We'll look into it before afterwards. Uh, right now, let me do this before I forget. Uh, start menu. So we have a script for start menu here, and it's getting continue game button. 
Wait, start menu script. Open it. So what I'm going to do is here, uh, if the if the file exists in the continue, uh, well, only then I'm going to. Only then uh, I am going to show the continue button. So on awake, awake cannot be public, I guess. Uh, awake is going to check whether string pop equals application. I'm going to copy it from here. So it's going to check this path if file dot exists in this path, then continue button. We have this continue button here. Dot set active to Yes. You go then set active. Pause. Okay. So the button is only going to show when there is an actual file or an actually load file available. Otherwise, it's not going to show. Cool. So that's done. And another thing before that is the checkpoint script. I'm actually gonna go to, I think it's gonna be here somewhere, scripts. So I'm gonna go to the checkpoint script. I'm gonna see that save system. I'm just gonna call the method, right? Just as I did in the save and load manager. Right now, I'm just going to allow the users to save game through checkpoints. Uh, I mean, the game is going to be automatically saved. So with that being done, let's diagnose the error again. Um, maybe I missed some. We have scene management available here. This is this must be a mono script. Uh, so we're going to be able to inherit Then we have a static boolean. And we have a save game, it's working, 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 working. And uh, we have print scene index. Then on private, enable, on enable. It's gonna giving me a particular error, right? Let's, let's go back and check. Okay, now it's not gonna give, it's not giving me an error on line 41, it's line 61 because I, I don't know. So what is the problem with line 61? I must have left any sample color or something. Look at me. <laughs> I'm not gonna <laughs> oh, I'm, I should be with log error. And in that football, I'm gonna say it. Oh my god. So I hate when this happens because the logical errors, these are worse, but that was the problem with the line. So I was looking at line 21 and thinking that the problem is with the own enable or something. That's on me actually. So the first ones in the bracket are the lines that are, that there are problems with, okay. Okay, now let's test our hypothesis. Let's check. We have nothing called player.save game here. I'm going to come here on the continue game button. Let's put save and load manager. And game out. Wait. This is weird. Save and load manager. Okay, yeah, we did not add any component to that. So I'm going to add a script which we just created assets, save load scripts. Save manager, okay. Uh, save load manager. Cool. Now I'm going to go back to continue button. And there is the load manager. And I'm going to do load game, okay. On continue button. 
all set. The game is set to be saved at uh, uh, when we hit a particular checkpoint. So as soon as I press new, okay. So continue button is not being shown. That's a good sign because there is no file here. Press new game. We're gonna be transported to our second scene. First scene, level index. This is the zero scene and menu. Um, sting time. We also make a loading screen as well for things like that. Just for like, you know, not uh, making it seem like the game is stuck here. Oh, you're here. So I have one checkpoint set here. I'm gonna kill this enemy. That was the one on the other side. This was the one that uh, was closer to me. I'm gonna go hit checkpoint one. I remember that I have a checkpoint here, okay? I'm pretty sure it must be, yeah, game saved. As you can see, the debug log here. I'm gonna quit it. I'm gonna start it. Hopefully, there will be a continue button. There it is. So when I press continue, what would, what would I expect? The player to be in a checkpoint position and one enemy down. Where is not in the checkpoint position and no enemy is down. Okay, this didn't work. But let's see if we have a save file. We have a save file. Um, so, save log manager, I'm pretty sure this one is still. Okay, the player object was not null. If it was not null, then the script should have, okay, it loaded the scene well, okay. I put that as false, so all these things should be, should have been like uh, loaded. So we're gonna see after it is false, but it is, what is happening? Uh, we're gonna put some debug log here, see. going to say getting here see if we are actually getting here okay so i'm going to go back here i'm going to press this thing okay one more thing uh we're not getting there <laughs> of course what did i forget i forget this uh actually let me let me go to three fives I'm gonna I'm gonna create a prefab of this thing. I'm gonna press save. I'm gonna go to my scene which I'm loading, which is which is the first thing. Yep, we have to uh, have to have this script available here as well. So let's go back to our. Let's try again. Continue. Yeah. So let me first delete this thing and we have save and load manager on both sides. So I'm gonna go with a new game here. Uh, kill this one. Checkpoint. Game is saved. And see what is not working. Okay, we are not getting there. So let me remove this restriction. Okay, wait. We need to put double equals there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is very. Uh, if you notice this error very earlier than me, then it would be very irritating for you. But I'm sorry. Uh, let's go again. Let's uh, make another. New game. It's true when the start. You know, 
and kill the other one. Okay. Yeah, go in there. Let's see if we make it there or if there is any other error. Yep, we are making it here. One enemy that was closer to me is died. I'm in the checkpoint's position. And one enemy is still breathing. I'm gonna kill this one again. And there's another checkpoint up there somewhere. I'm gonna hit that. I, I'm pretty sure it was here somewhere. Uh, so I'm gonna quit and see if it's really working or it was just a one time. Okay, yeah, it is working. Both enemies are died. We are on the new uh, checkpoint. Game has been saved and everything is cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. here just like this one here but it happens when you like uh, have a lot of things in your mind but so anyway so this was like a pretty uh, small actually tutorial as well uh, for a small game where you have only like uh, three or four variables that we had um, as you can see we only had these three things to save we just used binary for matter to save it and everything so one other thing you could use was uh, you know um export this all these old things in an xml file or a json file and get it back from there but we would need to like encrypt that file uh because xml is readable in notepad simply uh, and if i show you this file here as you know like it is not readable at all all right so i don't know what is happening with anything uh, but i know like i can read few variables here but the save data i don't know what is there right so, but XML is readable here, and if we change it here, then uh, the player can go like, they can cheat actually in the game. Uh, so they need to encrypt XML or JSON. Um, so that's why I simply use this method, like word binary formatter, uh, to implement this whole save system. So now uh, our menu system is nice and our save system uh, uh, save and load system is good we have checkpoints respawn and everything so now what is remaining is only to put these real things art assets and everything in these walls uh and design some levels and gray box them and remove bugs like these uh so after polishing we will work on these things and uh thank you for watching all the streams uh the next week would be the last week of the streams. Please um, stay tuned. It would be some cool discussions, some inter-team discussions, and uh, some final streams where the teams are going to come together. Um, it was very nice to uh, do these little coding streams as well as gray boxing uh, live here. And uh, even though I'm not, you know, seeing you guys here, but I know you're with us and watching us uh so thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next streams thank you have a nice day